I think a lot of it has to do with our, our marketing schemes and, and our, our social media presence and, and all that stuff. So Because marketing is easy. As most people know, us as the highly edited, photoshopped characters from the showcase and videos from the internet and other podcasts. Correct. Um, yes. We started out as Larry founded the company back in 2006. March of 2006, correct. Correct. So we just had, are we in May already? Yeah, we're in May. We're, we're, May we're beyond it. We're beyond May. Um, founded it for after starting with, you know, leaving another company that was as a basically as a sales rep for the area to basically build a better product for the area that was a more kind of budget friendly, more appropriate for the for I guess the the market we were hitting. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I started in a company that was based out of Virginia. In 2003, I was working for them doing sales, part-time sales. And then um, really I picked up from there. In 2006, I finally said, you know what, I I just couldn't do it anymore. The, the, the product wasn't exactly a good fit for this area. So we decided to move on a little bit. And, um, I, you know, it was kind of like... Because this was a part-time thing. This was a part-time thing at the time for me. And, you know, it was just, it was just easy to make it a part-time gig. And we started in a trailer. It was 12-foot... 12 foot uh, enclosed trailer is, is, where, is where it all started. Some Home Depot cabinets and some MDF uh, countertops. Yeah, and pretty much. That was pretty much the, the yep. whole start of it was, uh, was in, a, in a little trailer and we'd, uh, we'd run around and basically build these things and then we got kind of fancy and we started building them in my driveway. <laughs> and, then, and, then, uh, and then we took it from there. It kind of grew, it grew out of that. I mean, our first location we moved into in 2000. Seven? Seven or eight. Seven or eight. And that, that was, was like twelve or fourteen hundred square feet. Yeah. And that place was like bursting at the seams and we had a little tent that we would kind of truck out every day and then the one day the the, the wind took it and blew it down the parking lot and bent it to crap and that was the end of that. And we had a storage unit that we used to have to drive over and load up full of you know, shipments and things like that because we just didn't have the room for it. And it just was, you know, so far packed up that it was just, you know, it was at the end of it. And, you know, we had to make some, Larry had to, well, it was you, Larry had to make some business changes at that time. And after those changes were made, uh, we were able to uh, move into the place we're in now, which was a Excuse me. That was that lunch. You're right? Yeah, that was that lunch coming back up, yeah. um, which it allowed us to kind of grow this. Yeah, so uh, that was what, 2011? 14. 14, I'm sorry, 14. So, so 2014, 2013, I got rid of my business, my former business partner. Um, just things weren't working out, and so we moved in a different direction. So Ryan, Ryan was the first employee, and he was also, he became my business partner in 2000. 14-ish, and when we moved, um, we moved to the, to the facility we're in now, which is, what, about six or seven times the size of where we, we originally were, so we were, we were in that little, that little shoebox for a long time, um, and we finally found this place, it took a while, and we've been here ever since, and I think we're kind of bursting at the seams again, we've been so busy, but, you know. It's uh, it's been a good busy, right? Yeah, it's a good busy that we have now. We have this other office over here that we're able to have fun things like this and. Yeah, yeah, second office. You know, and maybe we we'll put it. We'll put it. Maybe we'll buy the rest of the building, put a gun range in here, and some <laughs> other things for you. You get the you get the the sauna. Yeah, sauna. Sauna's around the yeah. corner. Yeah. yeah, it's off the executive offices. Um, but yeah. it's an it's an interesting thing that when you can. You know, look back to where you kind of started out with and where your ideas kind of led you to. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when, I start, when I started doing this way back when, I was pretty much, you know, I was, I was in the volunteer firehouse and everybody would have me put in a radio or, you know, back in the day when it was, you know, you had, you had car stereos that got, tra- you know, they always asked me for help. Um, I did CB radios back then. And that was kind of like where I got the whole start in the vehicle thing. But, 
you know, nowadays I don't even think I could figure out these newer cars. I mean, they, these these guys are, you know, they're working with vehicles now that are that are completely different uh, with the technology and everything else that's going on. But uh, you know, I started back then in the in the '80s. Um, you know, I had a, I had a little bit of help from from my dad uh, along the way. My dad was a business guy. Um, I'd love for him to tell his story, but unfortunately, he's he's passed. Um, but he had you know he had a, a basically dropped out of school in tenth grade, um, but yet he managed to build up a business um, that he sold several times over. Um, in different iterations. So um, my dad, my dad became a uh, you know he was he was a a roofer, started roofing um, right here in Patterson, New Jersey, and then from there he he went into the military for a couple of years. He was in the he was in the Marine Corps, um, came out of the Marines, and he was working he, with his best friend, his dad, who was an optician at the time, and said, hey, this might be a good field for you, and that's just took off from there, and and he 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 went down that route and. He became an entrepreneur. Um, you know, he, he built up the business. When it got so big, he sold it. And then he waited his time to come back again. You know, if there was contractual requirements that he couldn't come back in right away. And, and he would come back, and he did it several times over. So he, I learned a lot from him the, as far as the business aspect of things, um, which, you know, helped me along the way. But uh, when, when we first started this, he was thankfully he was still alive, and he, he had a lot of on, input and a lot of a lot of good suggestions for us along the way. And um, you know, unfortunately, we lost him in 2009. But I'm sure he sees what this business has grown into nowadays, and uh, I'm sure he's you know really proud of it. So, but he's um, he's part of like the reason I really went into the business. And you know, I was working at, as Ryan said, it was a part time thing. I was working in law enforcement at the time, and um, I did my 25 years. Retired in 2019. Um, I've been a volunteer fireman with Ryan for. I've been there 30. Going to go be going on 33 years now. And Ryan, you've been there what 20 years now? It's 20 years. This 20 year. years. So, so you know, I've known Ryan a long time. You know, he'll never he'll never admit to it, but he he is an Eagle Scout. You know, he'll go back to his days as an Eagle Scout. Maybe we can find a picture of him in his Eagle Scout uniform and bring it in one day for everybody to see. Uh, you still don't wear that uniform, do you? I really don't think it would fit, and that probably. <laughs> That's that might be that might be too much for people. That might be too much for people. So yeah, so you know Ryan, Ryan and I go back a long way, and um, he's been in the firehouse. Um, we're not in the same firehouse, but we're in the same fire company, uh, different houses. What well, anymore? Anymore? Yeah, correct. Anymore. So, um, so that's kind of where the business started, and then with Ryan, we took it to a different level with the you know the whole expansion as as far as the whole new line and, and, and getting into the, the cabinetry, like, really hardcore. And that was really, well, Ryan and Matt pushed that. So, you know, Ryan was one of the first, was the first employee at, at, at 1075. And then Matt came on, there was a couple guys in between, but we had a couple couple early employees. Left, that w- came back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Matt was, like, that guy that he, sh- you know, he was he came he came in for a little bit. He worked part-time. What was that, that shingles where you get it as a kid and then it comes back? As an chicken pox, chicken pox, yeah. shingles, 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 shingles yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so Matt was your chicken pox, and now he's your shingles. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So Matt, uh, Matt was like there almost in the beginning, um, and uh, who else did we have in the beginning? It was Chuck was there, um, a couple other guys. Couple other guys it it was, one. I mean, it was a small, it was a small shop. Like it was. It was I think it was 1,250 square feet was the was the total size of the, the facility when we moved in. Um, it had one working bathroom, and then everything else was open space. That was really it. Um, they liked to put my name on the bathroom door. They made it my office. It was very nice of them. We had one little desk. Um, Which we still, we just, I think we just. I think we just finally got rid of it. But yeah. We had a desk that, that was as soon as you came in the door, there was a desk with a computer. We had... <laughs> Remember, that, remember that, that table? We had a little round plastic. The white plastic, plastic table that my mom gave us with the four plastic chairs. Yep. I don't know if you've ever seen what happens when, when big guys sit on those plastic chairs, but the legs do not last. They didn't last. So we had that, we had that for a while. But it was, it was a, you know, you we go back to. We, we had it until we moved. I think that's when we got rid of it. Yeah, but I think we broke a few chairs in the, uh, in the process. Maybe. I think we had eight chairs and we ended up yeah. with three or four at I the gave, end. I g- had blood taken in one of those chairs and passed out. Do tell. 
And I don't do good with blood. You know, in the beginning, I didn't know that I would pass out what giving that much blood. So I didn't know. In the would you pool. let a va- vampire came in or what? No, I was given blood for a blood test thing. And the, lady, the poor nurse lady's there giving it in the morning before anybody got there. And they're giving blood. And I passed out. And the lady woke up to the lady standing over me like all white and everything. She didn't know what to do because I had conked out. And she couldn't revive or bring me back like because I conked out. And I a little smelling know. salt. I, yeah, didn't know, I didn't know that story. Yeah, it was I, don't, for, I, don't, I think it was for like the like a life insurance policy or something like that, and it was like you almost, didn't make, you white, almost didn't make it to, to get in the policy. Yeah, but yeah. I, right, one of those white chairs, just <laughs> yeah. So the white the white chairs were with us for a long time. The old desk, the old desk we had up until the 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 table and chairs also made it to the break room here for for a little bit before we uh, upgraded. Which one? The that little white table, the plastic table, was with us. When we first moved in, we had it set up. Oh, the I, white table. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, I think when we moved when we moved in, into there, what did we have, five employees? The other shop? Oh, no, no, when we moved shop. here, about five, there's about five guys, right? One, two, yeah, there's probably five. Five guys, so. So when we moved in into, into our location in Haskell, we were about five guys strong, and I think uh, today if you look at the, the – uh, Employee list. I think there's 44 or 45 employees. So it's been between a uh, here in New York. Yeah, yeah. Between here and New York, um, definitely been a, uh, a crazy ride. I think there's more people in this room than there were employed in the B. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It definitely is, um, and that's not just the two of us. There's other people behind the camera and stuff. So counting all those. Um, but yeah, so that's that's really where it all started. Um, you know, I, I I spent my time in law enforcement, and I was on another podcast and made a comment about vehicles, and that 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 created a stir. I remember that one. Remember that oh, comment? Oh yeah, about uh, how people about, take care of cars. But yeah, who takes better care of cars? And I said, yeah. I said, who or who's rougher on cars? And I said, cops are definitely were rougher on cars. And I got so much hate mail for that. I was like, oh, I guess they didn't realize I worked in law enforcement, though. I don't know, or they just they were just so. So upset by the comment that they figured, uh, you know, they had to attack us. So, so ten, so the name ten seventy five. Um, it's actually, you know, it being a volunteer fireman, everybody knew the code. It was the code for the working fire in the city of New York. Um, we're literally, what are we, twelve miles from the city? So, you know, we we all these guys know New York City. Um, they knew the the whole, you know. So ten seventy five grew out of that. Um, I was surprised that it wasn't as well known out of this area as much as it wasn't. Even in more, you know, in South Jersey, pork roll territory, that somebody, you know, that's down south, even from a transplant, was like, the guys down here don't even know what that means. He's like, but I'm a, you know, I'm a northern Jersey guy. And he's like, I know, I, know, I know what that means. Yeah, yeah. The guy, if you were from, if you weren't from up this way, you didn't really know what it meant. So, so we. The name's gone through a few iterations over the times too. I mean, correct. I mean, we we started off as 1075 emergency lighting, and you know, we would get calls for people asking if we could put the emergency exit lights in for them, and mm. we're like, hmm, don't think that's the right name. So yes, that was so. That was. So we we went through that. Um, so we ended up with 1075 emergency vehicles, um, and we didn't realize something that was really unique is that when we started going to trade shows. Numbers are first, so we were always on the trade show directory list, always near the top. So, and that's you know, we we like to be up there because you know people you know, especially with our attention span, we go, okay, we're done. So, you know, so um, you know, it was it was good. I mean, it worked out, but yeah, a lot of people didn't know what 1075 meant. Um, they didn't know what it was. But, uh, you know, when we were emergency lighting, everybody assumed that we were doing exit signs and those emergency floodlights and things like that. And we were like, no, that's not us. So that's where 1075 emergency vehicles came out of. Um, and we made that change, I don't remember, 2008, 2009, later? Oh, later than that, 2014 maybe, when we first moved over? I want to say so, yeah. I have to go look at the paperwork. So, yeah, so we, that's where the name came from. The name changed. Um, and then, you know, out of 1075, I, you know, spawned the first in. So um, another 
number based. Um, you know, again, keeps us near the top on the directory and uh, easy to say, easy to say, easy to follow, easy to remember. Um, so, you know, that's where first in emergency products came out of, and you know, that was really a um, you know the cabinet and center console and plastic accessories. That was that whole line came out of that, and um, you know, it's been it's been been fun and exciting with that as well. Um, you know trips to FDIC and, you know, meeting customers and, and all that's been, been really, uh, you know, great because, you know, 1075 was more of a regional, I'll call it a regional type business. Yeah. I mean, you get to see, you know, the first in stuff gets to expose you to people and their ideas from across the country and see how different people operate and even internationally, because can, well, Canada, yeah. we have exposure in Canada as well. So, and what they're looking for, and what they're asking you to build, is just you're kind of like sitting there sometimes, like, oh, okay, like, yeah, and just you know, it, it, the the stuff that you get to sometimes build or get requests for, just sometimes you don't think you'd ever really get exposed to stuff like that. No, and and I think the other thing too is like. You know, we we talk about like everything we do as far as the cabinetry is pretty much custom. Um, you know, consoles are custom, but they're 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 more or less just set up with different face. You know, for different yeah. face plates. But but the cabinetry is really custom, and I, I you know I think the biggest thing we found is that even department to department, like within five minutes of each other, how much different they they run their equipment and their apparatus. I mean, um, and the setups are completely different. So you know, it's you know our the initial. And I remember when we initially did first, and it was like, okay, here's the five cabinets we offer, plus some custom stuff, and basically, you know. Yeah, I didn't really realize going into it how, I guess, how much people were going to build out custom stuff. I guess I didn't, that there was that much of a, I guess, a demand for it that we thought more people were more or less looking for. You know the cookie cutter, the cookie cutter stuff. That's like, okay, send me that, send me this. You know, that's what I want. And you know, well, then it became send me this, but put this, this, and this there. Yeah. And then can you do the? Oh, I saw this one online that they yeah. did this, this, and this. But I want to do this, this, and this too. And it was like, well, that's custom. All right. And I don't think it ever really was much cookie cutter at all because I think even though we started out with branding it with the cookie cutter stuff on the original website when we were listing it i don't think we i don't think i don't we really didn't sell much everything, yeah everybody right? was always yeah. looking for something custom and you, you know offered it no problem because we were used to doing custom but i was really surprised in how much it was still custom because we didn't think the market really was outside the area was as customized yeah and we've been you know we we've, we've been lucky and you know that we were basically, you know, the East Coast from Maine down to Florida. We have dealers. We've had, uh, you know, sold cabinetry, uh, center consoles, replacement floors, um, electric, uh, uh, the underseat electric uh, compartments. I mean, all that stuff we've sold all up and down the East Coast, Midwest, Texas, Florida, California. Um, you know, we've had an inquiry from a, a guy wanting to be a dealer in Alaska, which, you know, when I... I sent the information off. I was like, uh, you know, I, I don't. It's going to be cheaper for you to build it there than it actually is going to be ship it. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's better off buying a CAD machine and building his. Honestly, because uh, the the shipping costs to can to uh, Alaska are insane. So, I think the entire time, I don't think we take ourselves very seriously too much to the aspect of like uh, the just being a fire service oriented, emergency service oriented business like we're not the people that show up to a meeting you know in a suit and a tie or to a trade show in a suit and tie like you know you'll see us wearing jeans and shorts and a button down like a, a polo shirt like you know we're not we're not sales people we're not the people that you know are in there giving you sales tactics or trying to trick you into doing something like or giving you like a hard sell or anything like that we're there to like talk to you and you know see what you need and things like that and that's i think the difference with it and that's why like we when we market ourselves like we're there to have fun like with it like we don't have a problem pushing the envelope or doing 
fun things with like the haters comments or different funny videos or you know just trying different things just to be out there because I think well I think there's a relatability because we're, we're, yeah. we are we are we have a lot of first responders in the bit in the right. company itself so I mean as first responders mostly firemen we have a couple of retired law enforcement guys and I think I think that's really where it comes from is right. that you know it's a little bit more of a laid-back atmosphere I right. mean we're you know, not, we, we we're call not ourselves a casual. We call ourselves a casual, casual company. Casual, you're right. It's, yeah. it's just even the way that we're, you know, just in general with, with you know, the day to day of everything with the business. Like I think, just how we operate, how everybody is with the employees and everything like that. Like I think it's just the atmosphere in general of it, and like I mean, even like with the even with our customers and stuff like that. I mean, it's just, just to be easy. Like just. What, what do we need to do to make this work? Well, and I think that's, that's you know, goes to the point of, like, when we do trade shows and stuff like that. Right. We're not doing a hard sale, but we can we can talk to people because we've all been there. Ryan's an ex-chief. I'm an ex-chief. We have ex-chiefs in the, that, are, that are all, you know, so we've all been there in, in the back of a vehicle. We know how to set them up or at least give guidance on how to set them up. And that's right. that's a big difference. I mean, you'll, you'll, you know, you don't have some guy in a suit trying to sell you something that, He's never done, never, never will do, and has no understanding of. And I think that's the, the really the biggest difference with that. And that's that's where the custom comes in because we see from from day to day, you know, our involvement with the fire service that you know we've seen it evolve and and, and we see how it's going and we see how departments are. And I think I think that has a lot to do with with understanding what people want as far as yeah. custom goes. And I, I it it takes to a new level with that. And that's the can. I think it has to do with the can-do attitude of, you know, knowing, having the 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 background of, because we're still a very small company to the aspect of it. Where you're calling, you're not getting, you know, uh, you know, a, a salesman that just is there punching numbers into a computer and getting, you know, a, a build out of something. You're dealing with, you know, me. You're dealing with only a few amount of people that are there. You're not getting with a big conglomerate. Right. We don't have so, a, we don't have a customer service team overseas that's answering calls twenty four right. seven. That's, so it's not know, us. If if you're calling and you know you're asking questions and if can this be done, and I can more or less visualize it in my head to know that you know in relative terms it can be done, I can go grab Matt and get some type of rough sketch together, and. Or not even involve him, because then and just make the the problem easy. Because make the problem later, because engineering is easy later on. Yeah, let him figure it out. Yeah, let let them figure yeah, it out. He's just yeah, make it, it be done no as we said, make it done later. Um, but you know, it, knowing it can be done is just is part of the the problem solving that we have with. I think coming from the fire service and thinking on your feet aspect of it, where. You know, the, whether it's, you know, building a cabinet or finding some of chassis, whether it's, you know, shipping it from out of state or painting it, painting it or, you know, whatever the solution is or problem or the request is and making it work for the customer, I think, is the the difference of it. And I think trying to make that seamless for them is kind of the, the difference for them. And I, and I think if, if we realize, you know, we get the engineering, we realize it's not going to work. We just, we, we got to get on the phone with the customer and we're like, hey, listen, we right. thought we could make it happen. It's gonna, this is going to be an issue. Right. We got to modify it. Right. And, and these are, we're and, not afraid to do that. And and, the, and these are your options. And the, and giving them a, vi a different solution for it. And if it was an oversight on our part, like, you know, owning up to it and say, listen, we had put in the amount of work into it and when it came to the end of it, the finalization of it, like it just wasn't there. And, you know, we got to make some adjustments to it and, you know, here's some solutions for it. But, you know, make it, you know, happy in the end, you know. We, we, built, we built cabinets and we had to scrap them three quarters of the way through it. We're almost done with them and we realized it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, unfortunately it happens. But, you know, it's, it's a vision. Usually Ryan takes the vision and, you know, from the from the fire companies, and he runs with it, and Matt and Sam get stuck trying to figure out how to make it work. So, in our engineering department, I mean, that's what it comes down to. But we have, you know, we we as as a company, we've surrounded ourselves with good people too, and that's really, you know, we have people that are knowledgeable in, in certain areas, and and you know, I, I think we lean on those people when we have to. 
um, to really get the job done. And, you know, we know that, you know, it's, if it's got to be, you know, built out to test it, we'll build it out to test it. I mean, it's not something we've ever shied away from. You know, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's just been the way we've been since day one. I mean, you, yeah. you gotta not afraid to fail. No, no, you can't be afraid to fail. And you know, you, you sometimes you dump money in something, and you're like, well, that didn't work. Okay, now we got to start all over again. But I mean, it's it's part of running a business. It's part of being in business. And you know, again, it's you know, I think right now, as far as our company goes, we're very happy with the way things are running. We're very happy with the with the the employees, I, you know, I think we have some great techs working for us that are doing great install work. Um, you know, they're, you know, we're not a kind of company that's just going to just throw wires in and, and, and just run out the door and, and that's it. I mean, everything's everything's clean. It's neat. It's labeled. Um, you know, we're not trying to push jobs out the door. Um, you know, it's it's going to get done the right way. And I think that says a lot to everybody that works works in there on both sides, on the first inside and on the 1075 side. Um, you know, everybody puts in a hard day's work, and they, they really, you know, they really, most of the people, I think, enjoy working for us. And, uh, you know, again, it's part of, I think it's part of the atmosphere. It's, it's kind of a fun, relaxed atmosphere, and, and we get the job done. Um, you know, there's days that it's not as fun, and there's days that it's, it's, you know, it's not as easy. But, you know, for the most part, we try and keep it fun and relaxed and, and easy going. But, you know, it's been, it's, it's all been different since, since COVID, really. You know, things have changed a little bit for us uh, post-COVID just because we've exploded. You know, that was really the time that we we became a, a bigger bigger brand company. I mean, you know, and, and by, by no means are we big. We're, we're still a very small company. But, um, you know, we went from basically like I think 2020, early 2020, we had what, maybe 12 to 14 employees, somewhere around there. 20 maybe? It was less than 20, but uh, uh, somewhere around that 20 mark. And then from there, I mean, post-COVID, we're at, you know, we're a couple years past it, and we're at, we're at 40, 47, 45, 46, somewhere around there. So, I mean, that's a big, that's a big growth. Um, you know, so that's really um, impacted us as far as, you know, just, just growth-wise. And I think a lot of it has to do with our, our marketing schemes and, and our, our social media presence and, and all that stuff. So Because marketing is easy. So... I've heard that marketing is easy. I just, you know, you know, our marketing director, you know, he tells us that all the time. If marketing is easy. Just give me the money and I'll throw it at it. So, um, you know, I think the, 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 you know, you guys, as far as a team, you guys do a good job. And, and I think marketing has really helped us, you know, as far as the social media and all, like Ryan said, all the videos, be it the, 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 the actual showcases or the little goofy stuff that happens that gets caught sometimes, um, you know, it, it makes it fun, um, and that's again part of the the company dynamic. Can't make everybody happy. No, no, no. <laughs> no you know, you'll never make everybody happy, but um, we do our best. We do our best. So memorable moments during this crazy. I remember the burning of the credit card. I do remember record. that. Do you remember that? I remember that. Yeah, that happened. That was old. That was old shop. That was old shop. That was um, whichever credit card. Did yes, I was not. having an argument with the credit card company on the phone, and I said, "All right, we're done using the credit card." Ryan was. You said bit cut. You said younger. Cut I said. I said. I said. Get, I said. Destroy that credit card. Was yep. exactly what I said. So the next thing I know, I'm like, "What smells like it's burning? What smells like plastic? Is there, is there plastic burning?" And I turn around, and there's a blowtorch. And a credit card. He destroyed the credit card. So I mean, that was that was one of those memorable moments. Um, I had a fight with a mouse, computer mouse. You threw a, you threw a mouse at a computer screen. Yeah, and then I broke the screen. Because you're, because you're, you know, IT. My my patience. I yeah, I was like the Geek Squad. You're the Geek Squad, yeah. And uh, and my IT didn't work, and uh, rebooting the computer didn't work, and this didn't work, and so I guess the next best thing was just throwing that that poor little. It was a wired mouse, so it was a long time ago. Right through the computer screen. Yep. And then it broke. And then I said, I don't know what happened. More recently, rushing backed into our work Tahoe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That happens. It happens. Yeah. It was minor. That was minor. I arced a 
a wrench against a battery the one day. I think I nearly needed to change my shorts after that. That was one time. The other time, I think I, I didn't realize that I didn't realize what was going on. I was working on a fire truck and somebody had drilled through a strobe power supply wiring harness and I had a power probe and I was checking the wiring and it's it's AC voltage yeah, those, strobes, lean, those strobes took a lot of power and I was standing on a spackle bucket smart thing to do and I was in the compartment of the truck with it standing on the spackle bucket and I must have grounded something wonky or something like that and it basically arced out in my hand and I fell backwards into the gear rack. Um, that was interesting. Did the, did the spackle bucket survive though? Spackle bucket survived. Oh, that's important. Somebody ran me over with his car. Never happened. No reports were ever taken on that. No, no reports were ever taken with that. Um, that's what happens when you stand in the blind spot. Yeah, the blind spot. Yeah. Remember the buses? Remember working on those buses? Oh. Spent a summer working on buses, right? Yep. That yeah. was not fun. That was not fun. Camera systems and buses, that was... School buses are not meant to be taken apart. Yeah. The guy goes, oh, it'll be an easy project. 20,000 rivets later and screws. But, yeah, that, that was memorable. Um, what, other, what other stuff? Oh, the bowling. We went bowling one day. Some people didn't make it quite home as others did. Mm. It happens. Some libations might have, some adult libations might have been had, and some people were probably had to, had to be driven home. It happens. So, um, what's another? That's a. What did they get Jimmy with in his office? They decorate his office, or they they the confetti was it? Was it the confetti? I know we put the little stuffed rats in there the one day. Yeah, that that was. I it. don't know if we got him that good with it though. He's angry. That's why. Did we get him that good? Do you remember those the little rats? The little. No. The. No. You don't remember those? The remember rubber, they, remember they, when the when the rat was. Was remember when the f everything flooded and the rat was setting off the motion sensor in the shop, oh, yeah. and he was freaking out about it. Yeah. And then yeah, I got I got the little furry. Big, big. There was and I got the little stuffed rat that was like f actual. It looked real, and I put it on his desk behind his computer really? screen. Yeah, I don't know if we got video of that. <laughs> oh, we did put somebody on computer. Yeah. That, I don't yeah, the, that rat was that rat was big. Yeah, I thought I, th I didn't realize that we had rats that big in, in New Jersey. But. So some of the other vehicles, obviously, that we uh, work on, uh, you know, it's not just fire specialty or it's not just uh, emergency services vehicles, but we do do a lot of other vehicles. We do have some projects in the work for some. Um, like we're going to be redoing like an adoption vehicle interior soon that you'll probably pet, see. Pet adoption. Pet adoption. Not a, not a human adoption. Just, just pet, adoption. pet adoption. Pet, pet, pet adoption. Pet adoption vehicle. Yeah, that, you um, could get yourself in trouble with that. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a pet adoption vehicle that we're doing. Yeah. Um, we uh, did a uh, maker space for, for, we did the, the, for some school, other stuff. For, yep. for schools, um, which was basically a, a portable STEM lab. Um, yep. So that we, we, yeah, we do, we do branch out. We do. Uh, do other things. Um, we're up for a challenge is what it's, is really what it comes down to is, you know, there's a lot of crossover for different things for that we do. And, you know, it, it it's not hard for, it, it, you know, you take the lights out of it. What is it really? You just, it can be anything at that point, the application yep. for it. So, yeah. But so with... Yeah, with, I mean, it's anything technology-based. We, we love the challenge for technology. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, happy to bring it on, so. With that being said, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode with your hosts, Ryan Dodd and Larry Cohan. <laughs>